Hello there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal, and on this YouTube channel you can find videos about uh, Jerusalem, Israel, the interesting things I find in uh, both places, the interesting people I meet, sometimes also further afield I do make it out of uh, the country now and again, but for the most part that is what is coming up on this YouTube channel and I want to just uh, invite anyone watching these videos if you have a suggestion for a particular place I should go uh, within Israel to film a video or somebody I should interview because I want to have more interviews, more perspectives, more people on this YouTube channel, then do feel free to either leave uh, that as a comment on the video or uh, send me an email if you want to get my email address or an email address that'll reach me or one of my secret sec sec secretarial pool. I don't actually have any secretaries. Uh, use the about tab on this YouTube channel and an email will pop up. But the one that works for the moment or that I have set up as my uh, YouTube uh, filter in my Gmail is uh, public at danielrosal.com. I'll put it up on the screen, but public as in the public at Daniel Rosal, the way I spell my name on the YouTube channel, uh, dot com, and two L's in uh, in Rosal. Sometimes people send to one and say, oh, the email didn't uh, didn't get to you. So speaking of emails that got to me, I got one yesterday from someone called Rudy in New York. And this is a really good question, but it's a really thorny topic. So I figured I would uh, take it on today uh, just before we get into the Purim festivities here in Jerusalem. We have a religious festival um, beginning today in Jerusalem. It's one day after the rest of Israel. It's technically Shushan Purim. And it's kind of, uh, for those who haven't heard of Purim, sort of a carnival t carnival type experience here. So Rudy's question says, he says, Shalom, I'm planning on visiting Jerusalem this summer. I'm planning on staying in West Jerusalem and have read that Jerusalem is Israel's capital. A Palestinian tour guide I am planning on hiring, however, says that Jerusalem is the capital of Palestine and says that Israel does not own uh, the city. Are there two different Jerusalems? um is or he doesn't he doesn't use the word or but i'm gonna put it you know adding it for clarity or uh is the city shared i'm confused i don't i don't blame this person how does the city function today now it's actually that last uh, thank you for the thanks for the question rudy and it's actually the last part of question that i'm going to talk about because the status of jerusalem is extremely contested and very historic this is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world and if we go talking about the historical nature of Jerusalem uh, we could go back literally thousands of years and there's a good book by a guy called Monte Fiore talking about uh, Jerusalem for those who really want a deep dive on its history I will forewarn you that it is either good or bad bedtime reading depending on your perspective of what you want from a bedtime reading book it'll either put you to sleep very quickly which is the effect it's had on me it's a very dense historical text or you will be intrigued uh, go, as, as you go to sleep and go to bed with being intrigued about Jerusalem but it, it covers the whole history of the city and there's also a Netflix series recently about Jerusalem as it was I believe it's called the bridesmaid of Jerusalem I hope I'm not getting the name wrong and it talks it shows Jerusalem through the end of the Ottoman era the British era and then the Jewish era if you want to call it that because that's the interesting thing is that not so long ago Jerusalem actually was part of the Ottoman and here, here's a fact that I find mind-blowing personally Jerusalem was a part of the Ottoman Empire for about four times, I think, as long as it's been under Israeli sovereignty. So technically, the Jerusalem we know today, which is uh, Israeli Jerusalem, is actually more new than it was under the Ottomans. It wasn't under the British rule for all that long, uh, but there was uh, there's still very much remnants of British rule in Jerusalem today. For example, King George V Street, uh, which was inaugurated by, as the name suggests, um, or honored, or sorry, I should say, named in honor of King George. Um, but let's talk about the the question now. For, you know, if you ask, if you look for the Jewish perspective, the Jewish Israeli perspective, and of course, I try to mention whenever I present anything controversial that well, I am a Jewish immigrant to Israel, so my bias is going to be there. If you want, we will say that well, Jerusalem is a historically Jewish city, and Palestinians will say, but we want Jerusalem as the capital of our state, and that's kind of the stalemate we find ourselves in today. Uh, Jerusalem is kind of the flashpoint of the conflict. The final status of Jerusalem is very much up for negotiations. And I've done a video about Jerusalem's status under international 
according to the international community today. And if you want a deep dive into this subject, I recommend I'll put a link to my own video uh, in the description. But suffice to say that the international community, if you look at why most embassies aren't in Jerusalem, uh, the reason is the status of Jerusalem is uh, basically the majority of the world's nations hold the position that Jerusalem and, Isra uh, and um, the Israelis and the Palestinians need to work out between themselves, come to a bilateral agreement about the status of Jerusalem. And when you do so, we're going to, uh, you know, we'll, we'll accept that and we'll put our embassies and our consulates and our diplomatic representations and all the officialdom in West Jerusalem. But until you do that, until the situation exists whereby Israel occupies East Jerusalem or annexes East Jerusalem or has taken over east of the Green Line in Jerusalem uh, by itself. We're not going to have anything to do with Jerusalem. We're going to maintain this kind of unworkable but technically on paper existing solution that Jerusalem should be a city under a special international regime, something called the Corpus Separatum. The best parallel today might be the city of Nicosia, in Cyprus, which exists halfway between uh, Greek Cyprus and halfway between the mostly internationally unrecognized Turkish uh, Republic of North Cyprus, the TRNC. Jerusalem is not like that. And I'm going to again talk about just the status of Jerusalem today. So you have in Jerusalem a line running through it, which you'll see on the map called the Green Line. And that's over where is considered East Jerusalem. Something you won't see on the line, or maybe you will on Google Maps actually, is the boundary of the Jerusalem municipality, which is for all intents and purposes where Jerusalem is according to the Israeli position. But the whole city functions, and this is kind of the spoiler alert to my video, um, the whole city functions as one undivided city. Everywhere everywhere within the Jerusalem municipality network is considered by Israel to be Jerusalem. In 1967, Israel captured or took back the old city from uh, Jordan. There was a border running through Jerusalem between 48 and 67 or a uh, demarcation line or armistice line maybe is the best uh, term according to many. And that was a physically demarcated border slash armistice line with Jordan holding the city to the east, Israel holding to the west, with the exception of a enclave in Mount Scopus. Um, in 1967, the situation changed. Israel pushed out the Jordanians, not just from the old city, not just from East Jerusalem, but from uh, what we, the West Bank slash Yehuda and Shamron um, in general. And now those remain under Israeli control. And that's kind of created, or that's been the situation up until the present, which is sort of a bit of a stalemate and a uh, point of contention in international politics. But Jerusalem today functions as one city. So you can go from West Jerusalem to East Jerusalem without crossing through any board when the uh, I'm just looking at the question again when you know the Israeli website will say that Israel if you ask if you poll the vast majority of Israelis Israelis will say Jerusalem is our capital Israel has legislated Jerusalem as its capital according to a basic law and according to the long-standing Jewish tradition however if we put the international community as a side as kind of a third perspective many of them will say well that's not legitimate because it's a technically unresolved point of conflict between you and uh, the group known as Palestinians the Palestinians will say well Al-Quds or Al-Uds uh, is a Palestinian city and Israel has no right to be anywhere here. Um, a more moderate viewpoint would be that while we hope to have part of it, maybe East Jerusalem and the old city as our uh, future capital. So there is, you know, there's uh, there's nuances to opinion on both sides of the debate. But that's why you're going to get such conflicting information. Uh, and, and just to directly answer the questions, are there two different Jerusalems? No, we're talking about the exact same place, the exact same small city. Is the city shared? That's a much tougher question to answer. So the way it works today is I mentioned that you can go from anywhere in West Jerusalem to anywhere in East Jerusalem without encountering a checkpoint, border, anything, any uh, geopolitical uh, division, let's say. And everything will be under Israeli control. As I mentioned, the Jerusal Jerusalem municipality, which is the municipal government of Jerusalem, the urban government, the city is, you know, sort of, uh, some people would refer to it as, they control everything within the boundary of the Jerusalem municipality. And whether you're in point X in the west of Jerusalem or point Y in the east of Jerusalem, it doesn't make any difference. They're 
their authority, the sovereignty of Israel, the sovereignty of the municipality is applied equally in both parts. However, there is what you might call an invisible dividing line running through Jerusalem, corresponding roughly to that 1967 border called in Hebrew Hatefer, which means the seam. And basically, the populations are different. In West Jerusalem, it's a majority uh, Jewish city. East Jerusalem, it's a majority Arab Palestinian city. There are some Jewish enclaves built in East Jerusalem, built over the Green Line, because the right wing Israeli position is that, you know, Jerusalem is a Jewish city and we should have every inch of Jerusalem we want to populate, right? So you have those uh, communities such as in uh, Ma'alei Tim, but they're relatively small relative to both the land area and the population existing in East Jerusalem. But when you go over the 1967 Green Line, the Tefer, when you cross into East Jerusalem, because the people have changed, the uh, national identity has changed from Israeli to Palestinian, the political ideology has changed, the language has changed from Hebrew to Arabic, it's still kind of unmistakable, as well as a state of development. East Jerusalem is generally speaking uh, a lot less developed than West Jerusalem, just in terms of the quality of the housing, the quality of the infrastructure, not, of course, across the board. But if you were to take a taxi from West Jerusalem to East Jerusalem, yes, you wouldn't go through a checkpoint, you wouldn't go through a border, but you would probably be able to tell that at some point you'd crossed, you would see Palestinian flags flying on the road, you would see Arabic uh, graffiti, you would see, you know, Arabic people instead of Jewish people. And then you would also, if you went far enough, you would see the security barrier, which uh, divides roughly, follows the municipal boundary line and divides between the city of Jerusalem and the uh, west, the rest of the West Bank. They're now disconnected. Previously, they were connected. Um, I hope that's given um, a bit of info about Jerusalem today. I didn't actually talk about one other complicated dynamic, which is that Jerusalem also has a very religious Jewish population, what would be known in Hebrew as Haredi, which is just usually uh, basically a sort of uh, lazy word for very religious, let's say. And uh, they also have sort of an, an, a, a nucleus in Jerusalem uh, within West Jerusalem. So I think the best way to look at today's Jerusalem is actually not as one city, but as three cities, a kind of tribal confederation of a Jewish population that is either secular or moderately religious, a very religious Jewish population, a Palestinian population, no borders between all three groups, especially not between Jewish and Palestinian and, and uh, ultra religious Jewish, but separate bus networks, although they are now more interconnected than they were, separate hospital networks, separate school systems, basically parallel societies existing out of volition because the two groups just really don't get on. Final detail about the status of Jerusalem today is the Palestinian Authority, the PA, which controls Ramallah and the Area A cities in, in the Palestinian Authority is forbidden by Israeli law from operating in Jerusalem. So Israel really kind of cements its authority over East Jerusalem, even though it's not really what the local population want. And they regard Jerusalem municipality and Israel as illegitimate occupiers. So it's a very, very complicated situation, but there really is only one Jerusalem. I think anyone's going to agree with that. There's one city. We're not talking about uh, two different places, same place on the map, and no borders, but two very different uh, political identities on either side of that. Hope that video was interesting. And as I mentioned, if you do have questions about the political situation or Israel or suggestions for places that you think I should see, I would be love uh, to receive them, whether the, whether as a comment uh, on the video or as an email it doesn't matter both will uh, probably get to me and thank you for watching the video and if you want to get more like this please like the video and please subscribe as well it helps the channel to keep growing thanks for watching